Us girls love our cars and our independence. Let's go. And this Wellington woman is writing a PhD to drive home the importance of mobility to those of us with a disability. My car makes me independent. It just means kind of everything to me. I can, you know, um, make my own decisions and, you know, like, leave if I want to and go if I want to. And for my friends who don't have cars, that, you know, I can go and pick them up and that's really cool because they help me out in lots of ways. So, you know, it just makes for more kind of I don't know, equal relationship or something, if you can, if you have something to offer as well. Esther Woodbury is writing the PhD, inspired by her own experience with psoriatic arthritis. As far as Esther's concerned, it's a love letter to her car. I have a very, very loved but slightly dented Toyota Starlet. Everywhere I go, I take my car and I wouldn't really be able to do anything without it. Esther's had psoriatic arthritis since she was five. Often her joints are so inflamed she has to take painkillers and stay home. Even on good days, her mobility is restricted. I can't use sort of public transport or, and I can't walk very fast, especially um, in the wind. Not that Wellington's incredibly windy or anything, but I don't think I'm the only disabled person who actually um, relies so much on their car, and I guess I, I was just really interested to see whether other disabled drivers feel that it's really important and therefore, you know, what can be done to help people get into cars and participate more in society. Remember, Esther lives in Wellington. Lots of steep hills, not ideal with her limited mobility. There is a bus stop right outside her door, but she has trouble with steps and ramps. Her much-loved little car is by far the best option. It's not a want, it's a need. And she's hoping to highlight that with her research. Great, so Tanya, my study is about disabled drivers and social participation in driving. So could you tell me what your car means to you? Well, it, um, it means a great deal to me. I mean, it's, it's my, apart from my wheelchair, it's my other form of mobility. Obviously, the car carries my wheelchair. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I've got a very large dog. So he has to go in the back. It's a big um, mobile luggage unit. Yeah, it is. I'm not used to being the one answering the questions. Time to get back in the interview driving seat. I know with my car, it's quite a big engine and it's getting, the petrol's getting expensive. For a student, it must be quite hard. Definitely, because, um, I mean, petrol's going up and down and you don't know how much you're going to have to spend on petrol and, um, you know, just keeping your car warranted and keeping it registered and, you know, and it's like terrible if something breaks down and you're going, like, how am I going to pay for the repairs because I have to pay for the repairs. With many people with disabilities on low incomes, yeah. the cost of running a car is no small issue. But for Esther, there's no choice. The student lifestyle might not be flush, but it's still relatively cheap to take part in a peculiar Wellington ritual. We're going through the famous Mount Victoria Tunnel. Yeah, it's right. very important to beep when you go through this tunnel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so if we beep somebody, we'll Hope beep. so. Yeah? Oh, no one's playing the game today. Oh, a shame. oh there you go, we got a response. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Oh my god, it's mental. It's silly, eh? Well, yeah, it is kind of crazy. We don't have anything like that in Auckland. Esther will soon put the call out for other drivers who want to be interviewed for her thesis. She's expecting that, as we found, they'll have lots of experiences in common. Like for me, like when I'm in a car, I don't have to negotiate like steep curbs or yeah, try and yeah. get upstairs and stuff. Yeah. You can just... but it's a really steep hill, you just put the accelerator down. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you'd be able to do your job without a car? No. Yeah, because how does it feel when you have to rely on friends and family to run you around? I mean, it's. I mean, I've got really awesome friends and really awesome parents, but um, you know, I'd still rather be able to go myself and do it myself without sort of having to ask people. And I know for me, like when I'm driving, you know, you get that sense that you're sort of just like everybody else. It's it's a bit of a leveler. Yeah, definitely. I think that you know, I do attract attention sometimes and people will just come up to you and talk to you and ask you weird things and um, offer you help when you don't need it and that kind of stuff and when you're in a car you're just in a car and it's your own little bubble you feel more kind of equal because you're this well, even though my car is quite small you know you sort of feel like you know you're, you're all got the same 
sort of abilities and stuff in a car. Just before last Christmas, Esther had an emergency hip operation and had to stay home for three months. The setback made her more determined to highlight the link between mobility, independence and mental well-being. Ultimately, she wants to influence public policy so there's more support available. It would be great if I could change something. <laughs> I would, I'd really love to make you know things easier for disabled drivers. With three years to go in her PhD, it's the start of a long academic road. The people who are going to sort of participate in my research will, will be able to relate to each other's and my experience. And, and hopefully it'll be a really positive thing for them to get together with other people and talk about the things that they find really good and the things that they find really difficult and maybe they'll find, help each other find solutions. They say it's all about the journey, not the destination. But not everything you need is close to home. Something Esther will consider when she makes her next trip to an academic conference in sunny Greece.